All right, let's be honest. This is totally not a functional Sony a7 III in any way. It's uh, clearly a tiny bit used and full of, full of dust. But this camera, the Sony a7 III, might just be the camera that made so many of you guys, me included, switch into Sony. So I wanna make this video because I still think this camera, well, not this specifically maybe, but this camera, the Sony a7 III, why do I think it's still a great camera? Why do I think in 2024 still should be considered as a camera to buy? So let's find out. So obviously I didn't shoot any of this footage with this specific one. This is actually a fun fact. This used to be my actual Sony a7 III and uh, I used to shoot a lot of events back in the days and um, a laser struck right through it and burned my sensor and there's no way of changing the sensor on Sony. You have to change the whole body and when they did change the whole body, they just uh, gave me back this as a present. So thank you for giving it back because it's been uh, on my shelf since then. Anyways, the reason I want to make this video is because I think I've kind of mastered the Sony a7 III over the past few years. It has been on my shelf, it has been on my camera bag since 2018, which is the year that was released, which was six years ago. And still now to this day, it comes with me on my bag to help me film B-rolls or reels or whatever I need a second camera for. I still use the Sony a7 III. So I decided to make this video because I, if I can use it, in 2024, so can you. So the first thing I wanna cover is dynamic range and it's believed to be 14.7 stop of dynamic range and we all know that it's, it's not true because that's what they claim, but it's, it's never really the, the, the case. But this is claimed to be 14.7 while my Sony S3 is 15 stops, so it's pretty much the same, but we all know that because of the quality of the sensor and because it's new and all this stuff, the Sony S7 S3, it's obviously better in dynamic range. But I do think that if you're shooting S-Log3, instead of any of like S-Log2 and all these things, on the Sony a7 III, you can still get an amazing dynamic range. And I think the secret to using this camera still in 2024, it's just learning how to use it the right way. Because I, as I said before, I mastered it, I think, and uh, I can still get amazing footage out of it. So, you know, you can too. And um, yeah, the videos you get out of this thing with S-Log3, the photos you get out of this thing, they're still, you know, you can still use this for any professional, commercial, social media job you get out there. So there's really no limit on what you can do with this camera still six years after its release. The biggest upside of this camera in 2024, it's its price. That uh, you, if you buy new, it's probably not worth it. But if you buy it used, you can find this anywhere between a thousand to a thousand to three hundred dollars, depending on the condition. But that means that if you buy a camera like this and then you pair it with like a Helios 442, which is an amazing vintage lens we talked before on this channel, that is like a a thousand three hundred dollar setup right there. And you get an amazing camera, an amazing lens. And this setup would be three times cheaper than what I'm using right now, which is a Sony A7S III and a Sigma 2470. So you don't need that much money. And the barrier of entry for filmmaking, it's so low these days that you can literally buy one of these, get a nice lens for just over a thousand bucks and start making very, very professional quality videos. So. The whole reason I really wanted to make this video is because there's no limit on what you can do and you shouldn't put the limit on the gear, even though I'm the first one who always thinks that gear matters so much. And it does because, you know, the newest lens, the newest style of camera, the newest whatever. There's always a new piece of gear that we want to spend, waste our money in. But if you own a Sony a7 III and that's all you can own, you don't have to feel limited because it still has so much quality that I'm literally blown away by every day. Obviously there's a lot of downside and I think the biggest one coming from Sony A7S III after two, three years now, it's that obviously it doesn't shoot in 10 bit, which means that when you color grade, especially in high dynamic range scenes, the shadows and the colors kind of fold apart. But if you know how to shoot in S-Log3 properly, 
if you're using the right ND filter, if you're using the right settings, and if you expose correctly, and if you use a bit of denoise, especially the gamma denoise in DaVinci, it's things that, you know, you don't really notice that much, especially if you're shooting for social media. These days, this camera can shoot anything I'm shooting. And to prove that, I actually made a reel with some footage I shot on it a few years ago. Um, and I posted this reel a week ago and um, I made a poll on my stories afterwards and I asked, what about these shots? What do you guys think it was shot on? Was it an iPhone? Was it a Sony A7 III? It was in my Sony A7S III. And the majority of people actually guessed Sony A7S III instead of A7 III, which means that majority of people don't even see the difference. Now I spoke about S-Log3 before and the reason is because since day one that I've tried this camera, I tried every single picture profile. I tried HLG, Cine 4, S-Log2. I tried them all. I tried to play around with every single one of them. Change saturation, color, knee, all of these things. But, but S-Log3, it's definitely the one that you will get the best quality, the best results out of it, the best dynamic range, the best of everything. Just learn how to expose it. Use the right ND filter, pair it with S Gamma 3 Cine, very important, not just S Log 3. That's it. Learn how to color grade in Da Vinci and you will get amazing results of this camera. Obviously, the, the main reason this camera went so big when it did, it's because it was such a great overall camera. It made amazing videos, it shoot amazing photos, and that is still the case today, even though the video having 8 bit is a little bit limited. But for the photos, 24 megapixel, it's still better than so many cameras out there. So even having this as a second camera to support your Sony S7S III, for example, or to take photos, for example, this is still a great camera and I still take so many photos just with this specific camera, well, not with this one, but with the Sony S7 III that I have. Look, I'm not here to tell you you should buy a Sony A7 III in 2024. I just wanted to make this video because I still think that so many people feel limited by their gear and they feel like their barrier of entry of filmmaking is too high. You need so much gear, you need gimbals, you need lights, you need this, you need that, you need the newest camera, you don't need any of that, okay? All you need is one decent camera, decent enough, especially if you're starting out one decent enough lens or vintage lens if you even want to go more stylistic and that's it and something like this you know you can buy now use for like a thousand a thousand two hundred dollars and probably can sell it next year for you know losing a few hundred bucks and that's it and in the meantime you shot so much stuff you learned so much more and maybe in a year you can upgrade to a new camera so if you are starting out in filmmaking the sony sm3 it's by far what I recommend you to get still today, just because you should learn how to use a camera like that and how to color grade something like that. If you start in filmmaking and if you start from an amazing camera like the A7S III or like a Blackmagic or a Canon, whatever it is, if you start from the top of the line, you kind of won't have any disadvantage right away and you need to be suffering a little bit when it comes to filmmaking, okay? We all did. We all did all our mistakes. So learn the basics of filmmaking, use your gear, and I'll see you guys next week. And uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around.